Hey YouTube, Jimmy here. So in a recent video that we did, two ETFs for the second half of 2018, you can see a link in the description below, we got a request to do a video on Celgene. Now, Celgene is a biotech company. It's been beaten down a lot lately. So I thought it would be interesting to analyze it and see if it's an opportunity or if it's something that should be avoided completely. So as always, I'm always looking for videos just like this one. So if you have anything, any ideas for videos or ideas for companies, please post in the comments below and we'll see what we can do. And as always, please hit subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell notifications so you can get alerted when we post a new video. Okay, let's get rolling. So Celgene is a global biopharmaceutical company that focuses on discovering, developing, and commercializing therapies that treat mostly cancers and immune inflammatory related diseases. Now I want to point out that biotech companies can be extraordinarily difficult to analyze since they're often very technical and the material about these companies can be written in a very industry specific way that is difficult to interpret if you're not familiar with the industry. So with that in mind, I've tried to keep this video a bit more high level so that we can all walk through the general trend of the business. Okay, so Celgene's number one product by far is called Revlimid. It's approved in both the US and in Europe and it helps treat bone marrow cancer and some blood disorders. To put this in perspective, Celgene had about $13 billion in revenue during 2017. Revlimid accounted for almost 65% at just over $8 billion. Okay, of the $13 billion in sales that they had during 2017, about $8 billion of it came from the United States, and most of the rest of it was generated in Europe. Now to understand this business, we have to realize that research and development is crucial to the long-term success of pretty much any company that relies on drug development. With that in mind, Celgene spent almost five and a half billion dollars of that 13 billion that they brought in on R&D in 2017. This is good in theory because the more they research, the more likely they are to discover a life-changing drug. Well, I was curious and went back to see how much they spent in R&D over the past few years relative to revenue, and here's what that chart looks like. So before we look at valuing Celgene, let's look quickly at how they got here. This is a chart of Celgene going back to the middle of last year. So the first drop right up here, this is where Morgan Stanley downgraded Celgene and said that they thought that there was a chance that a generic version of Revlimid, their big product, could come on the market as soon as 2020. They predicted that if a generic did hit, the company would fall by about 20%. That would put the stock at about this level. Okay, next, about two weeks later, Celgene drops by more than 7% after the company announced that it would be ending the trial of their Crohn's disease drug. This drug was expected to generate more than a billion dollars in revenue by 2023. And what made it even worse, on top of not getting the billion dollars in revenue they thought they were gonna get, was that they paid $710 million upfront to a drug maker based out of Ireland, which means they're all the billion plus in revenue, and also they have to eat that $710 million that they spent to get to this point. I also think that the hype of this potential drug played into the stock's decline as analysts had been talking a lot about this drug and about its potential, and they had really hyped it up. So I think that added to the decline once it turned out that the drug wasn't going to work. Now it's important here to point out that these types of drugs are tough as hell to create and Celgene has a history of buying promising looking drugs and hoping to find their next Revlimid. Okay, so going back to the chart, next up is an earnings report. Now this one is interesting because revenue came in at about $8.3 billion, earnings per share came in at an adjusted amount of $1.91, which was right about what analysts were expecting, but guidance was lowered which, as I'm sure you know, can be a killer for a stock. Specifically, the, what they did was lower 2020 earnings per share guidance from $13 a share to $12.50. Okay, once again, jumping forward in time a bit, we see that right about here, Celgene announces the acquisition of Juno Therapeutics for about $9 billion. They state that they're gonna use some cash and they're gonna issue some new debt. 
Now, Celgene already had a deal with them and they owned about 10% of Juno. And the question is, why buy Juno? Well, Juno has a pretty good pipeline, and although many of their products are in the early stages of development, they have a lead project called JCAR017. Basically, this drug is trying to more effectively kill cancer cells by re-engineering the patient's T cells. In theory, this is a more targeted way to try to kill cancer cells. Celgene estimates that if this product is successful, they will bring in about $3 billion in revenue for Celgene. Well, despite this, the stock pulls back and some analysts say that this was expected anyways and was already priced into the stock. Okay, maybe. Well, we skip forward a bit and Celgene once again reports earnings and this time they beat EPS estimates and they stick with their previous guidance for 2020, so nothing crazy happens. The stock has a little bit of a slide shortly thereafter, but it was mostly about an article had come out about the head of business development who left months before. Somewhat ironic since a lot of people criticized the deals that he was making, but anyways, he left the stock slid. Well, the question is now for us, what is the company worth and should I buy it here? So this is a tricky question to answer. Personally, I like this company. They have an impressive 18% compounded annual growth rate, which is quite good. And although there's pressure coming down on their top product, Revlimid, they know this and they seem to be trying to hustle to replace it with something else. I believe that the acquisition of Juno Therapeutics will contribute to replacing that. I also expect them to continue to make acquisitions in search of the next great product on top of their own research and development. And although many of their drugs will fail, some will work. So if I were going to invest in Celgene, I would really need to be ready for a crazy ride. Volatility will likely be high and it's possible that good news or bad news can whiplash this thing all over the place. So I've looked at some competitors to try to gauge what the fair value of Celgene could be and it seems common for analysts to be using a PE multiple to value these types of stocks. Well, Amgen is currently trading at a forward PE of 14x. Gilead is currently trading at a forward PE of 12x, and Biogen is trading at a forward PE of 15x. Now, if we take the low end of 12x, that would mean that the price target would be about 110. If we take the high end of 15x, it would be 140. Now, let's say that we used an average of, let's say, 13. That would give us a fair value of, call it 120. So from my perspective, given the recent struggles of Celgene, I think it's fair to use the low end of estimates. That leaves us looking at a price target of about $110 a share. Now, Celgene is currently trading at about $84 a share, and if it can get to 110, that's a bit over 30%. And to me, it seems that this stock falls into the classic GARP category. GARP is growth at a reasonable price. Over the past five years, the company has grown more than 18% a year and solid, ex solid growth is expected going forward. I'm optimistic that Celgene has enough of a solid business in place that supports me paying less than 10 times next year's earnings and I'm fairly confident with that. Once again, if I'm going to invest, I need to be ready for the volatility and the potential for more bad news dragging this stock lower, at least in the short term. With that in mind, I am likely to keep my position size for Celgene rather small relative to the rest of my positions. And I do want exposure to the potential upside of Celgene, but I'm going to keep my position size small as to not get overexposed. Okay, one final point I want to make. If you're a subscriber to my channel and you've seen some of the recent videos I've done, you may have seen a video I did about General Electric. And in that video, I said that I didn't feel comfortable adding General Electric to my portfolio because things were a bit too chaotic for GE as a business right now. Ultimately, I was afraid that there could be another major event that could send GE significantly lower and I wasn't sure what that event would be. Now with Celgene, it's a bit different. That major event happened when it came out about the generic version of Revlimid hitting the market in 2020. So we know what the problem is with Celgene. 
and so does management. And I believe that is why they're hustling so much to make acquisitions like they, the one that they made of Genotherapeutics. Therapeutics. And I believe that they're going to do whatever they can to try to replace the revenue that will be lost once the generics hit. The question for me is, can it be done in a reasonable amount of time, specifically before 2020? But overall, I believe that Celgene appears solid enough right now, and it is a relatively a relative of value enough at less than 10 times next year's earnings to hold a small part of my portfolio. So let me know if you agree with my assessment of Celgene in the comments below. And I'm always interested to hear what other people think about a company that I'm looking at. So if you like these types of videos, hit subscribe. And as always, if you have any ideas for new videos, anything we can do that would be interesting to you, post it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. And I'll see you soon.